Teachers of Reddit, have you ever accidentally said something to the class that you instantly regretted? Story 1. When I taught fourth grade, I had a hearing-impaired little boy who wore special hearing aids that picked up my voice from a microphone I wore around my neck while teaching. I was pretty good about turning it off when I was not delivering a lesson, but sometimes I forgot. One day I was so frustrated with my class, and I went into the hallway to cool off. I vented quietly while banging my head against the wall. These stupid flipping kids, I want to knock their stupid flipping heads together. Of course I didn't mean it. Took a deep breath and went back in. The little boy was smiling a cow-eating grin and winked at me. He never told anyone. He was so cool. Story 2. A student once came into my math class to promote a donkey basketball game the teachers were going to participate in. He said, I don't know about you, but I really want to see Mr. C, referring to the teacher of the class we were in, get up on that peach and ride it. Mr. C instantly responded, you sound like my wife. After my peers burst into hysterical laughter, he explained, absolutely mortified. He meant the student's comment reminded him of his wife saying that she wanted to see in peach riding in peach. Story 3. I taught English in a maximum security juvenile detention facility that was made up of primarily inner city kids anywhere from 13. 17. Kids were there on any number of charges ranging from repeat candy offenses to weapons charges, assault, and murder. I was teaching a unit on text connections. Text to text, text to self, text to world. I had brought in an article on PTSD in the military because a number of students in my classes slash cell block groups had mentioned they had family members who were or had been in the service. A buddy of mine was active duty army and I figured this was something we could make an easy connection. The lesson went over great in two classes. The last, however, was extremely difficult. M.A. Does anyone here have a family member or friend who has served in the military? Crickets M.E. Does anyone have a friend whose family members have been in the military? Crickets M.E. Does anyone know anybody who may know someone who has been in the military? Crickets growing frustrated and trying to force the kids to make any connection I could come up with, I stupidly blurt out, Me. Does anyone in the room know anyone who has terminated somebody? Crickets. Then suddenly, student. You in a room with about eight of them. Awkward silence. Story 4. Preface. The word for banana in Japanese is chinchin. I was a teacher in Japan at the time, in a sixth grade class. We were playing a game and I was naming different body parts for them to touch. Touch your knee. Touch your eyebrow. Touch your elbow. I was having trouble thinking of the next part for them to touch and blurted out, touch your chin, without thinking. Q26 grade boys laughing and grabbing their crotches. Story 5. I used to work at a preschool as a toddler teacher. We had these annoying strings hanging from the ceiling with clothespins on them so that we could clip up artwork or decorations. One of them was right at eye level. And after walking right into it several times and uttering obscenities under my breath, I decided to take it down. One boy, a very observant little boy as it turns out, asked me, where oh no it go? It took me a week to convince him that clothespins are not called dammits. Story six, I remember something my teacher once said to the class that made everyone cringe. We were in secondary school and working on some maths problems as the teacher went around the room helping. A boy in my class, Chris, had a really bad lisp, and in an attempt to get the teacher's attention shouted, Thur, as in sir, quick as a flash, the teacher replied, Yeth Kreith. Everyone burst out laughing, and the teacher was obviously horrified at what he had said. He was a new teacher, and obviously was so used to joking around with his mates that he just forgot where he was for a second. Story 7. About six years ago, I'm teaching 7th grade writing. I had just gotten a new student who could be best described as strange. My lesson is coming to an end and I am getting ready to give the assignment. The strange new kid raises his hand about the same time as another student. He then begins to whistle at me while raising his hand. I turn to him and explode. I ask, do you think I am a flipping dog? The class erupts in laughter. I never lived that one down. All the classes heard about it. TL Dictor, I dropped the F-bomb on a new kid. Story 8. I work at a juvenile correctional facility as a teacher. One day my students were really grouchy and uncooperative, so I got flustered and said, Boy, are you guys crabby today? Quicker than I could understand what was happening, five of the biggest, burly, known gang affiliated youth up out of their chairs with literal fire in their eyes and said, What the fudge did you just say? Turns out the Bloods gang members will sometimes call the Crips gang members crabs to insult them. Thankfully, they quickly realized I did not mean it with malice, being a pasty middle-aged white guy, and sat down before it got ugly. TLDR accidentally insulted the Crips gang while teaching at a Jiv. Correctional Facility Story 9 During student teaching, I split the class up into groups to learn about how different social groups women, African Americans, Native Americans, Mexican Americans, farmers, etc. were impacted by the New Deal. Once they were in their groups, I sent them to different areas of the classroom to research when I dropped this line. Where are my African Americans at? 
African Americans to the back of the classroom. There were two kids in class. Story 10. Seventh grade, my first year teaching. Kid did not want to read his next line of dialogue in A Christmas Carol. I thought he was just nervous about reading to the class, so I say, very reassuringly with a smile, I know it's hard. And then he said his next line. Very attached to me was banana. Whole class busts up laughing. Whoever put that in the textbook was definitely trolling middle school teachers. Story 11. I'm a middle school art teacher. I had my 8th grade students make paper mashy initials, decorating them to match their personality. Anyway, we were putting them away when day when one of the kids goes, Miss, Miss Kitten, where do you want the D? And I said, Oh, wherever it will fit. The class passed away laughing and it took me about two seconds to realize what I'd said. Oops. Story 12. I was teaching English at a kindergarten, Hakwon, in South Korea. It was my first teaching gig and I didn't really know what I was doing. The kids were very young and were getting bored with my lesson. They were leaving their chairs and started singing songs, Kitty Chaos, etc. In a moment of dumb frustration, I smacked my forehead and said, Oh, fudge! All of the kids heard what I said clearly, and at the same time, they all dropped what they were doing and mimicked me. Fifteen kids were running around the class and smacking their foreheads while saying, Oh, fudge! really loudly. They saw that I freaked out a little when I said, No, 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 no! and held my hands out in a pleading manner. So they, in turn, all said, No, 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 and mimicked me again. At that moment, I just laughed at what was happening because they had no idea what they were saying, but were having a lot more fun than learning about verbs. It was an experience I'll always remember. Yeah, I sucked at teaching. Story 13. First lesson with a new class, 28 first graders sitting in a circle. In a hurry from the piano to the whiteboard, I jump over this boy's head. Except I don't. I knock him out with my knee right to his forehead. He passed out on the floor. The discipline in that class from then on. Edit. Spelling. Phoenix O underscore baby underscore baby. How was I supposed to know? Edit hash two. Only Reddit will award you for knocking a kid senseless. I like it. Gold, Jerry, gold. Thank you. Story 14. My buddy is kind of an awkward guy and he teaches high school. He had just shaved his beard and in class a kid says, Oh, mister. Jones, you shave. Knowing he usually shaves his neck, he grabs his face and says, Oh, you mean up here. Kids pass away laughing, thinking he's talking about shaving his balls in front of high school kids' edit. Many people have asked for the location of Mr. Jones. He teaches chemistry in a suburb of Chicago. Story 15. One day in high school, a student Amanda mentioned to the class that her father ran marathons. The students who knew her father went on to talk about how fit he was and how young he looked. This was the day after parent-teacher conferences, and upon hearing this conversation, our boy Spanish teacher chimed in with, Yeah, he's a dill. The class froze. Amanda started crying, and he almost got fired. Story 16. When I was a teacher's assistant, the school had some kind of clown in for some assembly. He proceeded to tell us a story with a moral to it, made entertaining with actions and miming. It was about a guy who was ice fishing. Problem was that the clown was French-Canadian, and with his accent when he said ice, it sounded like peach. Blissfully unaware of this, he told an elementary school all about a guy going peach fishing and all of the things he did around the peach hole. Story 17. My SO was a middle school teacher for a couple years, and she told me this story. She was talking about the importance of doing their homework. She was trying to think of something to say, and she came up with, You can't just go home and play video games all day. Some kid from the back of the class shouts, Is that what you do after school? Cue a red face and boisterous laughter. Story 18. Not a teacher, but I was a nanny for some time, and one time we pulled up to the house and my phone was ringing. After I pulled over and answered the call, I told the kids we'd go inside in a minute. It was my boyfriend, and he said something that shocked me, and I said, Oh, cow! Completely forgetting the kids were in the back seat, age two, four, and eight. The two and four-year-old were almost asleep and didn't catch on. But I looked back after I got off the phone, and the eight-year-old's eyes were wide as tea saucers. I played stupid and said, what? Like I had no idea. He said, you said the S word. Mom gets so angry when dad says that word, we're never supposed to say it. He looked so mortified. And I told him that I was telling my boyfriend how to make deviled eggs. He didn't know what they were, so I showed him on my phone what they looked like. And I told him that I was telling my boyfriend how to make the yolk filling. I told him that he actually heard me say mush it, but only heard the second part. He totally bought it, and the mom howled with laughter when I told her later about it later. Story 19. Had a computing teacher about six years ago. Great guy, bit of a dry sense of humor, though. Me and him got along well. One day, this girl kept asking to use his computer to check her emails because Hotmail was blocked for students, so they didn't use MSN or whatever. She kept asking and asking until he finally said, Stop it or I'll teabag you. This happened in Scotland, and while teabagging is a well-known term. In certain parts of Glasgow, and for the older generation, it's used to mean stab multiple times in the chest. 
He was clearly joking about the whole stabbing thing, and it was all part of his sense of humor. But when we finally explained what the meaning behind it was, he was mortified. Something like that nowadays will get you fired. Was a known story throughout school as well. Last time I saw him, I reminded him about it, and he cringed so hard. Edit. We did inform him of the real meaning. Story 20. Back when I used to teach in a high school in New Zealand, this kid from my social studies class goes, Hey, Mr. Kempiot, how old is the queen? Annoyed that I was disturbed on my thought process and being my first ever time teaching a bunch of kids, I accidentally blurted out, I don't give a fudge, which caused the entire class to erupt with laughter. That became the thing they said to me for the next year of my time there. Edit, Wanganui, City College for those interested. The kids always asked me how old the queen was every lesson. I didn't particularly want to teach, I just did it to go to NZ. But I learned that it's a job for people with way more patience than I can muster. After the first term was over, I got put in a different role to change things around and became a woodwork assistant and taught my social studies class to some older kids to help them catch up with what they missed out on. It was great for me because I used to just go surf and my co-teacher of the class would cover for me. Story 21, not so much what the teacher said, but what was said to her. It was an English class and the teacher, Ms. Kelly, was having people in the class read aloud and switching between people at random to make sure everyone is keeping up and paying attention. Ms. Kelly Ewan, can you continue reading? Ewan starts reading the next line. Of course I will, baby. Ms. Kelly. Thank you, Ewan, class laughs hysterically. Story 22. The history teacher in our school was telling us about the Kimberley mine, a huge mine where tons of diamonds were found in South Africa. There was this girl named Kimberly, and the teacher didn't say Kimberly's mine, she would say Kimberly's hole. She went on saying how big Kimberly's hole was, and that a lot of people got sick because of her hole. When she realized people were laughing their faces off, she realized, I haven't seen a face that priceless ever since. Story 23. I taught a class at a community college a few years back as an adjunct, and was talking to the students about my attempts to get tickets to the upcoming Adele show. Dean of the school walks in the door for a surprise review just in time to hear me say, who do I have to sleep with to get tickets to this show? Ended up getting a pretty good review, surprisingly. Story 24. Our English classes were split up by genders because the boys would often be too embarrassed to talk in front of the girls about emotive subjects in literature. Led to some solid work and discussions being produced, but that was also due to the excellent teacher. A supply teacher took over for one lesson, and the entire class was very rowdy and talkative, with the supply unable to even start the lesson plan. She pipes up, All right, boys, let's not have a mass debate. Could not have been any worse. The entire class was hysterical for the rest of the lesson. Story 25. I was a shotgun instructor at a Boy Scout camp once upon a time. It was raining cats and dogs at the range, and it simply wasn't safe to do any shooting. We were huddled under a pavilion, and my fellow range master had the bright idea of having the scouts tell us jokes in the hopes that they could make us laugh, and we could give them free tickets for ammunition. Most of the kids in the group were, and one asked if he could tell a joke. I looked at my fellow instructor and we both sort of shrugged and decided to let the kid proceed. Long story short, the kid's punchline had something to do with folks hanging from a tree after some form of lynching. I looked at the ground and said, that's messed up up. When I looked up, every eye of every kid was as wide as a saucer, and they just freaked out that an instructor would swear. The murderously joke was no big deal, saying fudge was. Story 26. I was teaching my kids in history class about job specialization and the assembly line and I was talking about someone who works in a factory doing the same thing over and over again. I used myself as an example and said, so imagine I'm really good at screwing. As soon as it came out, I wanted to bring it all right back in. Laughter ensued. I just looked at my students, and Gob Bluth sad walked out of the room. Story 27. I had a kid sophomore pester me during my first year of teaching. The whole week he had something to say that was either inappropriate or uncalled for to me and his fellow classmates. So when he asked, why did the Mayans pass away out again? I replied, because you touch yourself at night. And the whole class erupted in laughter. It was the last time he tried to be funny. And the last time I have ever replied in that manner to a student, I was 23 at the time and fresh out of college. Story 28. Teaching a class in a university in China one of my first few weeks there, I'd been given the talk about how one or two of the students in every class are part of the Communist Party and will sometimes report if they think the teachers are being subversive. Almost never happens might have been a rumor. We're talking about American history, and one of the kids says it's terrible that our military would students at Kent State because of the Vietnam protests. The next thing that comes out of my mouth is probably one of the dumbest things I could have said. Well, all countries have done terrible stuff in their pasts that they regret. Look at how your own country treats Tiananmen, which resulted in a lot of confused looks. I tried to backtrack and change the subject, but the students were curious. Thankfully, someone suggested, 
There was a lot of propaganda at the time. Maybe the videos and pictures on the internet were created in Hollywood. Thank you years of improv classes because it gave me an easy out. Whoa. Yeah, they could have been. I've never thought of that. Luckily, my dumb mouth did not land me in Chinese prison, and it turns out the newer generation of students are able to have frank discussions about their past, despite what I was told before going. P-Edit. So I know I wouldn't have actually gone to jail. Or rather, I know that now. China is actually a wonderful place where Westerners enjoy a lot of freedoms that the citizens might or might not have themselves. However, at the time, we were sort of scared into believing that we were being monitored by the party, which in my mind was a huge Big Brother-type organization, so that we would stay off of taboo topics. Clearly, nothing happened, so my initial fears were wrong. Story 29. I used to teach high school seniors. One of my classes was a group of kids who were generally attentive and well-behaved. But for whatever reason, one day there were two or three kids who just would not pay attention or listen in any way. They were being a little rude and they were distracting the other kids, but they weren't doing anything that warranted a write-up. In that class, there was a kid, let's call him Joe, who made really excellent, accurate paper airplanes. He was not one of the kids who were being distracting, but he was making one of his planes that day. In desperation, I told the distracting kids, if you don't hush, I'm going to ask Joe to throw paper airplanes at your head. I knew he would be able to ding them in the back of the head in a way that wouldn't hurt them, but would get their attention. The whole class just stopped dead and stared at me. I couldn't figure out what their problem was. Then it hit me, Joe in addition to making really good paper airplanes, was also of Iraqi descent. And this was right around the time that the Bush administration was trying to convince us that Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. I wanted to sink into the floor and pass away. Fortunately, Joe had a really great sense of humor, and he knew that I didn't intend to say something as epically stupid as what I actually said. I apologized, he laughed it off, and I thankfully got to keep my job. I felt really, really bad, though. TLDR. I basically told some students... I'll get the Arab kid to attack you with airplane. Story 30. Not a teacher, but was a student. College linear algebra class taught by a very, very German grad student from Hamburg. It was Yom Kippur. Half the class was out. Large Jewish student body. He looks around, said in a thick German accident, My, we have many Jews in this class. We don't have so many Jews in Germany. Everyone looked around for a few seconds and burst out laughing. He just looked confused. He was a very nice guy. The implications of what he said sort of just flew over him, I hope. Edit. In response to a few comments, a large portion of the class was out that day. He asked why. The remaining students told him it is a Jewish holiday. He made the above comment in an off-handed way, I think mostly in regards to the number of absences. I don't think for a second he intended to or was aware that he just made a reference to the Holocaust. Edit, edit. I find it funny that next to teachers who accidentally talk about banging students or about another student's hole, the fact that a, most likely 26-ish German guy, might have inadvertently made a reference to the Holocaust to be the most unbelievable thing. Yes, the Germans as a people are super reserved about the war, but it doesn't preclude one awkward math grad student from making a silly remark. Contrary to popular belief, Germans aren't uniform automatons. Those are the Swiss. Story 31. Eighth grade, math class. Desks are in pairs. We're all working independently on stuff, and I'm sitting next to Matt. Matt raises his hand to ask a question. Teacher comes over, late 40s woman, and kneels beside his desk. Matt immediately says, Oh, wait, never mind, I got it. To which the teacher replies, Oh, Matt, I got down on my knees for that? Story 32. My first day in criminal justice class, my teacher introduces himself by telling the story about the first time he got. After I felt the impact, I laid on the ground and played dead because I was afraid he would bang me again. It was a touching story, so when I erupted in laughter, I was sent to the hall to compose myself, caught my breath, and as I walked back to my seat, he was finishing the story with, my partner was still trying to get in from behind. I calmly stood up and went back into the hall and tears of laughter ran down my face. Story 33. First day of school in an all-boys school, new teacher is doing roll call. Teacher, is Michael Allen here? Here. Do you go by Michael or Mike? Mike is fine. Okay. Is Richard Aaron here? Here. Okay. Let me ask you, Richard, do you prefer banana? Immediately, a kid from the back yells, he flipping loves banana. Took at least 10 minutes and the removal of three or four students, myself included, to finally calm the class down. I just could not stop laughing. Edit. The only reason you can read this coherently is because slash you slash lambnub. Thank him for the fun. Story 34. I am not a teacher, however. I am sure my English teacher senior year regretted showing us the 1984 movie. She playing from here computer through a projector? In the version we saw, there's a scene where Julia takes off her jumpsuit and is leaving nothing to the imagination. 
Nobody saw this coming, especially my teacher whose reaction was to run up to the screen to block it. She forgot it was a projector. Now the Julia was all over my teacher. By the time she made it back to her computer to stop it, her face was the reddest thing I've ever seen. If she didn't regret that, I don't know what she would. Story 35. My high school psychology teacher preached about how wonderful it is to be given compliments and how they are warm and fuzzies and other nuage nonsense. To prove his point, he asked a girl in the class to go to the front of the room and then asked the students to give her compliments. After about 30 seconds of awkward silence, the teacher must have decided that his experiment was probably having the opposite affect as he had he planned and decided to pay out the first compliment he could think of. At least that's how I've since justified it. After the dead silence, he says, I think Melissa is C X E. After realizing what he said and seeing the shocked faces of all of us, he profusely apologized and pleaded with us that it just slipped out and not to tell on him. Story 36. Not a teacher, but I read it on another thread. Teacher was giving a class on close relationship ed, and the subject of anal close relationship came up. The student said, you, why anyone do that? Don't knock it until you try it. She then realizes what she has said, but it's too late. This story spread around the school and some students even used it as a graduation quote. Sorry in advance for formatting on mobile. Story 37. I am a primary teacher in the UK and was teaching P5-6 a few songs on our last day of term. I brought my guitar in to impress the youngsters and started having a jam session in class. It was just after a notorious school shooting. Won't mention the name, don't want this name being publicized in any way. And we spent a good half hour singing pumped up kicks. The second I realized what the lyrics were actually saying, I put the guitar down and politely asked the kids to stop singing it and to not mention the song again. Edit. Sandy Hook. Story 38. As a teacher, specifically a math teacher, I often make a single arithmetic error every other lesson or do. Normally, I catch it before my students see it, but not always. It's always a chance to use the classic, I was just making sure you were paying attention. My first summer after teaching, I got hired to teach pre-calculus to students who were trying to get ahead. The students spent six hours S-day learning math, which meant that the students saw me make a mistake at least three times a day. One day, I was particularly distracted and kept making mistake after mistake. Finally, a little too loudly, I sighed. I gotta stop doing sweets. Immediately, I let out a haggard like, I shouldn't have said that. The kids laughed, and thankfully, I didn't hear from any parents or my principal. I now tell that story the first time I mess up for the year in order to connect with my students. Story 39. Substitute teacher, Mrs. Solomon was in for one of our last finals as seniors. Nobody gave a fudge. Sub was about 100 years old and was known for being a hard ass, earning the nickname the Solomonster. One of the class stoners raises his hand and says, Mrs. Solomon, I can't possibly take this final. I'm way too toasted, Mrs. Solomon, oblivious. Somebody get this boy some jam, he's toasted. Story 40, English teacher here. I had this acronym on the board to help students with a specific type of essay for the state exam. The acronym was DEAR. I told the students to complete D, then I'll approve them with a post-it before they can move on. Fine, a kid raises his hand. So you want us to just do D? Me. Yeah, just D. Student. So you just want D? Me. To the class. Guys, I just want D. Just give me the D face palm. Story 41. I have two. I teach second grade for a frame of reference. I was teaching the difference between a simile and a metaphor. For a simile, I said, he is as hard as a rock. I lolled so hard in my head right after the sentence came out of my mouth and tried to recover by pretending to show big muscles. I don't think my students understood why I was so frantic all of a sudden. The second moment I really regret is when I was encouraging a student who works slow to hurry it up. He always talks about how his mother calls him a grandpa and to hurry up. He's kind of a class clown and likes to make jokes and make fun of other people and laugh. So I thought that I could use his mother's phrase on him. So I told him to hurry up, grandpa. And the class laughed with me because he says it all the time. He instantly burst into tears and wouldn't work for the rest of the day. I felt so bad. I apologized to him in front of the class and said that it was wrong of me. And my students were like, yeah, that was mean. I also apologized to him after school and in the morning the next day to see if he was okay. Man, I felt really bad. And I won't be so careless in the future to be so casual slash buddy buddy with my students. Story 42. I'm not a teacher, but this happened in my third grade class. Our teacher, Mrs. Mace, had just told us to get up and go to our classroom lockers. She meant to say, don't run into each other or look where you're going. Instead, she yelled, don't look where you're going. Of course, being a third grade class full of smarty pants, everyone covered their eyes and ran around. And Jason hit Kelly in the nose with his elbow, at which point she bled and cried and cow got real. Story 43. One time in English class, my teacher called this kid Stephen Bruce. Stephen and Bruce were both kids in my class. 
One was tall, the other was short. One was pale, the other was more tan. One had curly blonde hair, the other had straight brown hair. They basically had nothing in common except they were both flaming. Everyone in class knew how and why she got the two confused, and they all, myself included I feel terrible, burst out laughing. Everyone was laughing their asses off and poor Stephen was in back of class, turning bright red and possibly contemplating shooting everyone in the room. I'm pretty sure my teacher regretted making that simple mistake. Story 44. Instantly regretted implies the really obvious ones, like cursing, insulting a kid unintentionally, etc. The really dangerous situations come from the delayed reaction, when you don't realize how fast and how far people are going to run with something you let out of your mouth. As a young teacher in his early 20s, I was a smart peach. This is not a good thing, especially for working at a small private Christian school in Central Florida. One day, I was teaching 8th grade and a young woman, Janie, asked me, Mr. Hamster Cleaser, are you a Christian? It had no bearing on the lesson and caught me off guard. Now, I know what I should have said, but instead, I blurted out, I worship pork products. Her eyes went wide, but she said nothing. We resumed the lesson, and it was forgotten, or so I thought. The next day, the English teacher came by to see me. Um, Hamster Cleese, what did you say yesterday in second period? Having already forgotten, I looked at her, bewildered. What do you mean? Did you tell the students you worship pork? I remembered and explained it was an off-the-cuff remark. Being a good sport, she chuckled. But before she left, she warned me that I should not have done this. I shrugged and agreed, assuming the matter was over. No, I had just gotten a taste of what was to come. Next came the calls from parents. Some called me directly. Ah, Mr. Hamster Kleese, we are very concerned about your light-hearted attitude towards our Lord and Savior, etc., etc. Then came to trip to the principal's office. I had to explain it was a flippant remark. He had to explain that he had received half a dozen calls from parents. Any more flippant remarks like this and he would have to reconsider my employment at the school. I left the office shaken and cursing myself for having a big mouth. The only people who didn't seem upset at all were the kids. In fact, they thought it was hilarious. It became a running joke for two point Mr. L. Hamster Cleese worships bacon, was scrawled regularly across my dry erase board. During history class, I was asked at least once per unit, Mr. Hamster Cleese, what kind of cured pork products did this culture use? Even the parents and staff started to realize this was a lot funnier than they had originally thought. Christmas rolling around in time for Secret Santa? Yep, I knew I was getting some kind of pork product. Parent-teacher conferences? I would not escape unscathed. My favorite was when one of my friend's kids was pulling a bee. During the conference, she leaned over and said, Would this change your mind? She slid a pack of Oscar Mayer wieners across the table. I told her an A demanded Smithfield ham or nothing. We had a good laugh. The finest moment came in world history class, during my final year at the school. We were covering the Byzantines. I gave an assignment of group art projects and presentations. One group wanted to do a mosaic in the style of Byzantine art. I agreed. A week later, presentations rolled around. The group went to the front of the room and carefully unrolled the six-foot-long, five-foot-wide poster they had used as a base for their mosaic. There it was. In perfect Byzantine style, they had chosen to portray me as Jesus Christ. One hand up in a gesture of absolution, and the other clutching a can of spam. Sure, it was technically heresy, but what are you going to do? It was beautiful and utterly twisted. I had to give them an A. Besides, I knew I was already leaving for grad school. So hey, no harm, no foul. I put it right up on the wall in my classroom, next to the other art projects. After I left, I kept that thing for years. And when I talk with my students on Facebook, they still sometimes remind me of the mosaic or ask me about my current preferred brand of bacon. Unfortunately, I left it at my parents' place and they threw it out a couple years ago when weeding out the garage. So really, the comments you regret most or maybe least might be the ones where you just don't know what effect they'll have. A quick comment can define you for the next few years of your career. I had the blessing and the curse of being defined by pork products. Story 45. I was working in a middle school in a not-so-well-off neighborhood. To get the kids to be able to relate to me more, I would often crack jokes to them. This would usually involve me dissing them in a comical fashion. One day I worked super hard to set up a fun activity in the foods lab to teach a science concept. While I was trying to review the concept at the end of the class, everyone was super chatty and not paying attention. Typical middle school day, but after the effort I had put into the lesson, I lost it on them. The whole class was got quiet and I went back to teaching. Then I hear this one female student laughing and talking away like nothing happened. My head turns and I'm pissed. The whole class sees it. The girl who is being talked to is looking straight at me with the face that reads, I don't know why this girl is still talking. So I say, hey, student name, what are you laughing about? Is it your face? Dead silence. Everybody's mouth drops. And I'm thinking, holy cow, what the fudge have you done? With quick thinking, I say, prush, and make a face playing it off like the joke it was meant to be. 
Worst joke ever. The class erupts with laughter, including the female student. Someone in the class asks her, student name, why are you laughing? She replies, cause it's funny. Yo, conservative hippie just made fun of your face. She turns to me with a shocked expression. Wah! The rings and it's the end of the day. I call the female student over and we have a chat. Bring up the fact that she really needs to listen more as she missed the joke. Not the start that most have, but we went on to have a great teacher-student relationship. Conclusion. I made fun of a female student face, and we got along better afterwards. Story 46. I teach middle school. Had a kid last year I could not stand. He openly admitted that he liked to start cow with the other kids just to wind them up. Then he would run to us about how they were threatening to kick his peach. Anyway, he caught a 10-day suspension for something and I hadn't heard. So as I'm taking roll, I said, where is X today? One of the kids says, that punk got suspended for 10 days. I immediately said, oh, thank flipping God, without even thinking about it. They all lost it because everyone hated him so much. Remarkably, no one ratted me out. I dreaded that class, and he was gone for two weeks. It was blissful. Story 47. Instantly? No, but pretty quickly? Yes. I needed my students to watch a movie and didn't have time to show it in class. It wasn't on Netflix or YouTube, so I bought it on Amazon streaming and gave them my password. You can't buy stuff and send it to a new address, and I trusted them anyway. Later that night, I realized that they would be able to see my past purchases. A few months earlier, I had bought a book for my friend's wedding. I don't remember the exact name, but it was a manual on how to please a woman, even though you have a small banana. I changed my password before any of the kids had logged in. Happily. Story 48. Freshman year, we had a teacher who was fresh. It was their first year. Dude was 22 years old, maybe, and looked pretty dorky. He did a little introduction and joked that his nickname in high school was the ladies man anyway people started getting rubber band and leaving them on his desk with notes to the ladies man it continued at least weekly through the whole year story 49 it wasn't instant but i did end up seriously regretting my decision to show this video in an upper division university course on popular culture most of the students were all right with it they were a little shocked but appeared to be taking it in with an open mind i explained the reasons for making it as well as its connection to artistic forms of research art as research meaning knowledge production and so on. At the moment, I thought it was a fun and challenging experiment in pushing pedagogical boundaries. I even made direct connections to the current course material, current events, and other things that I felt contributed to the course. When I got home, I told my partner. She wasted no time in telling me what a stupid decision I had made. I laughed it off. Then, however, many months later, I got my student evaluations back. They called me a murderer. Story 50. Not really relevant, but a funny situation. My English teacher was talking about the objectification of women and went on to say how in it focuses on the specific body parts of the woman and not the whole thing. He then asks to a whole class of boys if they had noticed this. After a couple of seconds of tense silence, I reply with, um, we wouldn't know about that sort of thing, sir. And the class bursts into laughter, including the teacher. Story 51. I'm not a teacher, but I'm a basketball coach. I was demonstrating shooting in front of a basketball camp of about 40 males and females aged 15, 17. I was telling them how they need to cock their wrists all the way back every time they get into there because if you only cock it to 70%, you're never going to be able to find 70% cock again. I realized right away what I said and just froze. The entire camp lost it for about two minutes. Story 52. Not a teacher, but after my years of being a student, the worst thing I've heard from a teacher is, oh no, I'm surrounded by idiots. Talking about the students. I stood up from trying to get something out of my locker and said, me too. I was one of the best students in the grade for his subject. Note, he walked out of the classroom and whispered it to himself between classes, and he hadn't seen me. Edit grammar. Second edit. I forgot to put in the first edit note. Story 53. I may have a winner here. I'm a middle school chorus teacher, and I had given my students a song that was challenging for them at the time. A student said, I want to sing easier stuff. Without thinking or missing a beat, I replied, I wouldn't be teaching you much if it were easy. I like it hard, baby. There was no intention of soy me entendre at all. Some kids giggled, but thank goodness it was a sixth grade class, and most didn't catch it or at least didn't react. Story 54. I once made the mistake of responding to a your mom joke with another your mom joke. After that, the kid tried to say more to me from time to time, but I shut him down. Fast forward to me after I switched schools. It was summer, and a friend of mine was driving kids from my old school to a football camp and asked me to come along to keep him company. On the trip, the kids were trying to tell me your mom jokes to me. I just didn't respond. I told my buddy I was going to address them at the end of the trip. When we got to the camp, I made this speech. Hey guys, I just wanted to say a few things before you go. First, I know I said I'd accept your Facebook friend requests after I wasn't your teacher anymore. 
Just know that if you make any inappropriate comments, I will delete you. Speaking of inappropriate comments, some of you are making some jokes on the drive here. I just wanted to say, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, there is not one of your moms I could not bang if I set my mind to it. There was a brief pause, then cheers, laughter, and applause. TLDR told my ex-students I could bang their moms if I wanted. Story 55. I was teaching third grade and was trying to explain to my students where the food they ate came from. By the time I realized that they had no idea meat came from animals, they were truly realizing that meat came from animals. And before I could steer the conversation away, about 75% of my class was crying hysterically. I also made a flippant joke about Santa Claus not being real to the student council group I lead, which consisted of all fifth graders got the joke, and one third grader was devastated. Story 56. One student told me, I'm going to Six Flags this weekend. Immediately before two students informed me, they would be leaving at that time to go to a funeral for a former student who had recently passed away of cancer. I responded not to the roller coaster enthusiasts, but to the funeral attendees. Well, I hope you guys have tons of fun. Maybe there will be a clown. I spent the next month in embarrassed regret. Story 57. I teach a cognitive thinking class to felons, so still technically a teacher. I was explaining the rules for the first day of class and no cell phones as a rule. One guy complained that what if there is an important call but his phone is off? He explained the week before a friend committed, and he was chastised for answering it on his probation officer's office. I blurted out, That's a bad excuse to keep your phone on. It's not like he can terminate himself again. I felt like a banana and apologized, but that guy still hates me. Story 58 I teach 7th and 8th grade social studies in urban public schools. Last school year, one of my 8th grade boys broke his right hand. He's the type to mutter stuff under his breath and always have something slick to say. The first time he came to my class with the cast, he refused my handout and gestured to his cast. I smiled and quipped, Well, there goes your social life. There was an immediate eruption of laughter from every boy in the classroom. I spent the rest of the week worried I was going to get fired. Story 59. In my 10th grade physics class, there was a girl who was having trouble with some variety of special relativity problem. The teacher, who was fed up with having to repeatedly explain the solution, snapped in her and yelled, Michelle, take your shirt off! The class erupted in laughter. Once we finally quieted down, we realized it was because the girl was wearing an MIT shirt, and he had meant to imply she was unworthy of wearing that school's logo.